Oh, yes. Would you turn to Psalm 19, please? <laughs> yes. Just say yes. Say more. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Is everybody blessed and highly flavored tonight? <laughs> oh, yes. And out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. <laughs> the mystery. In his presence is fullness of joy, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. <laughs> oh, God, I hope you get it. <laughs> Whew. In verse 1, would you read it with me, please? Psalm 19. It says, The heavens declare the glory of God. Is anybody there yet? <laughs> I feel so low. <laughs> so low, nobody can hear me. Praise God. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. Now, what it says is day unto day, day, unto day utters speech as he's talking about his word continually to go forth. And people that are speaking his word, it's, it's constantly going forward. And it says, and night unto night reveals knowledge. That is called revelation called revelation there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard and their line has gone out through all the earth and their winds to the end I mean and their words to the I'm winded <laughs> I'm winding over here man God be the glory listen uh, and if I just leave here tonight my sneakers I donate them to charity <laughs> Oh, my wife wants my sneakers. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whew. Did it get hot in here or something? Man, it's cooking in here. Glory. Whew. Man, my elbows are sweating. <laughs> Help. Okay, verse 3. There is, no, there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom going out of his chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one end of heaven, and its circuit to the other end. And there is nothing hidden from its heat or presence. Of course, you can feel the heat right now, can't you? In this, uh, this psalm is so important and it goes on, but I want to share a little bit about this because one of the things the, the Holy Spirit was quickening to me, I mean, we've been just going in all kinds of places, man, I'm telling you. And you know, there's so many things that are happening right now in the world. And so many people are being sucked up in the things of the world and fear and anxiety and this and, and listening and believing garbage. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, because the eternal realm, which where God dwells, it says, you know, God is speaking from the heavenlies and so forth, a representation of the eternal realm. He's trying to impress things from the eternal realm into the natural realm. Is everybody with me? And, and so more now than ever. You know, um, I mean, in, in the Old Testament, you know, so many times that um, the prophets that prophesied when the Spirit came upon them, I mean, um, they didn't even know what they were prophesying about. 
the Spirit came upon them and just, they just started prophesying. And, and they didn't never had full understanding of what was what. They just did it because the Spirit gave them utterance. But see, that means the eternal was impressing through an individual. In other words, the only way that it could be done is through the spoken word. And there's an eternal impression God is doing right now, phenomenally, quickly, and powerfully. And, and in this eternal impression, read it with its representation of God eternal, is impressing into the natural realm and speaking to his people. And so many times we miss it because we're too caught up in the things of the world. Too caught up in self. Me, myself, and I. It's a trinity of darkness. Hello. And you thought it was Satan. <laughs> the false prophet and the beast. Yes, it is too. But, um, or the Antichrist. But in, in this, because, you know, self was the offspring of darkness when we were born into this world. Amen. But now that you are born again of the Spirit, baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not of this world. And the eternal impression is by the Spirit, and He's trying to impress things in us so that we don't miss the things of God. And He's doing it in all sorts of ways. Amen? Impressions from the eternal, and when I say eternal, it means God Almighty, God eternal. Because I call Him eternal every now and then. Eternal. Impressions from the eternal... <clears throat> Uh, are through revelations. They're through what? Revelations. In other words, when you get a revelation of something, it's a revealing of a mystery of something unknown. It's something that's been hidden. So when you get a revelation, that's actually an eternal impression. Does everybody un understand this? And when you understand that eternal impression, now it becomes a revelation to you. But if that eternal impression comes to you and you don't understand it, it doesn't mean anything. And that's why so many people miss God. Amen? And, and in this, I want to go to a couple areas that the Spirit has brought me to and bring revelation and the understanding and how God is trying to eternal impress. Would you turn to Daniel chapter 2? Daniel chapter 2. Hallelujah. You know, so many times people are going, well, God don't want to speak to me. But that's not true. God wants to speak to everybody. Everybody. He spoke to the devil, didn't he? He said, it's written. Amen? Didn't he say, get behind me too? <laughs> Didn't he tell him, you're going to go to hell? <laughs> Daniel chapter 2 and verse 19. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 19. Is everybody there? Oh, hallelujah. Would you read it with me? Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a what? Night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. So there was an eternal impression. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. How many of y'all know God can change time? How, you all, how many of y'all know he can change seasons? Amen. In fact, he has changed time already because time is getting shorter. He has shortened time already for me and you. It says, he removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might 
and have now made known to me what we ask of you, for you have made known to us the king's demand. In other words, God eternal, et the eternal creator from the eternal place desires to reveal secret things to his created offsprings. Is everybody okay? In other words, eternal impressions keep us connected. Revelations. The Bible says where, where there is no revelation, my people remove the restraints. Are you listening? In other words, we, because there's an area where we are restrained from doing things that are not pleasing to God. Well, when there is no revelation, an individual begins to drift. Are you with me? Begins to drift. That's why it's dangerous without revelation. Now, you may be in here tonight and get revelation because of an illuminated word that the Holy Spirit is trying to impress eternal impression and bring you revelation. Amen? Why? Because we hold on to revelations from God. Man, I'm telling you what, I, I got to have them. I hold on to that revelation. Why? Because I know my dad spoke to me. I know that he did something. There's something going on. And I hold on to that revelation. And I go from revelation to revelation to revelation. That's called going from glory to glory to glory. And that we as believers who are spirit-filled should be going from revelation to revelation. We should be seeking him. The problem is, is most people don't seek him with all their heart. Is everybody okay? Again, the eternal creator from the eternal place desires to reveal secret things to his created offsprings, me and you. Eternal impressions keep us connected. Those are revelations. They keep you connected with him that he is real and he's with you. Without those revelations, people drift. They become religious. And then the enemy begins to creep in. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Hallelujah. Eternal impressions. Oh, glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's go for it, man. In verse 1, it is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and what? Revelations of the Lord. Of the who? Of the Lord. Do you think that connected him? Amen. I know a man in Christ who... 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know. God knows such a one was caught up to the third heaven. Who was this? Paul. He's writing about himself. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into the paradise and heard expressible words, inexpressible words, which... It is not lawful for a man to utter. Now understand this, that the Jewish tradition does not mention the name of God because it's not lawful. So obviously Paul heard God's name and all kinds of other things. Is everybody okay? In verse 5, Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast, except in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth. But I refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees, sees me to be or hears from me. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the what? Revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. 
Therefore, most gladly I rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. These eternal impressions of visions and revelations allowed Paul to make it through his trials, his difficulties, his distresses, and his sicknesses. Does everybody get it? It allowed him to go through no matter what. That's why we go from revelation to revelation. It's the same thing from going from glory to glory. Remember, the eternal is trying to impress in me and you. He's trying to bring impress things from the eternal realm into me and you. So that we can have revelations. When they are understood, they become a revelation. That's why it's important to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's usually one of, you know, if somebody accepts Jesus as Savior, okay, good, that's first revelation. Second revelation is baptism in the Holy Spirit. Well, let me tell you, that revelation will bring you to deeper revelations of God. And too many people stop at salvation revelation. Are you listening? When there's so much more, there's a vast amount of eternal things that God is trying to impress in us. But, we might, but too many people are not willing to pay the price. And of course, that's to die to yourself. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. We'll start at verse 1. Eternal impressions. How about worship? How about praise? Man, don't you get an eternal impression? Did you get an eternal impression when you were worshiping? If you didn't, come on up here and I'm going to give you an impression. <laughs> come on, if you seek it, I'm telling you, man, there's always an impression. God never leaves. Listen, when the Lord shows up, He never... You never leave empty-handed. I mean, you're always imparting something. If it's joy, peace, whoa, yes. Fun, heat, whatever it is, there's something going on. And then sometimes the manifestation will come even later. Usually does. You know, because it's like he shows up and gives you the gift. There's a present. You know his presence just showed up. I call that present. And then later on you get to unwrap what's in it. And I was like, whoa, there's revelation. Yes, whoa, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 1. Then after 14 years I went up again to Jerusalem. And this is Paul talking with Barnabas and also with Titus with me. And I went up by what? Revelation. In other words, there was an internal impression which Paul understood called revelation and it was bringing direction. So everybody got it. It was bringing what? Direction. I went up by revelation and communicated to them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to those who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And this occurred because a, a false brethren secretly brought in, who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we did not yield submission even for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Now this is powerful because, see, the Holy Spirit was able, the eternal Holy Spirit was able to impress Paul and warn him about the individuals that were coming in. Are you listening? That were there to try to bring bondage into people. 
Believe me, I see people come into services that the enemy has sent to bring bondage. And it's amazing. Anyways. Hallelujah. And, and it's amazing that, uh, you know, the people that, and then people, I, I see people go and hang with these people. And it's like, they don't see it. They don't see it. They don't see the bondage. That's all they're trying to do is bring bondage to individuals. And, and they don't even, listen, they're so religious, they think they've been sent by God. But they've been sent by the devil. And there's a difference. But she, there must be that discernment. In other words, Paul was impressed by the Holy Spirit. Because he knew that he was sent there by revelation. Let me tell you, when God sends you somewhere for something, you know something's supposed to happen. Amen. You know, I, 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 was, I was at a meeting a couple of weeks ago and there was this person talking and about the ministry and on this, that, and whatever and just crying the blues and crying the blues. And my spirit was getting irritated. And I was there with another pastor and, uh, and so the other pastor, I thank God, I was like, Lord, help me, get me out of here. Because this is foolishness. This person's crying the blues about ministry. And I wanted to stand up. Listen, if it's the, if, if it's the Lord's ministry, he's going to provide. Quit trying to promote your own ministry. If it's God's, it's God's. If it's yours, you're going to struggle. And you're going to have a hard time. And, and, and you're going to cry the blues if it's your ministry. Are you listening? I mean, that's what I wanted to say. But thank God the pastor, the pastor I was with, he looked at me and said, well, it's time for us to go. I was like, praise God. Thank you, Lord. He got impressed. <laughs> and we expressed right out. Hallelujah. So we see here that Paul went up by revelation because of the fellowship with the Spirit. But he knew that God had sent him, but he also knew the realization because the spirit revealed to him about those in other words now he found out why God sent him to expose those who were bringing bondage into that fellowship are you listening Ephesians 3 oh hallelujah Ephesians chapter 3 they're okay Praise God. Let's read this. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how that by what? Revelation. He made known to me the mystery as I have briefly written already, by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it has been revealed by the Spirit of his holy apostles, to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power so this is powerful we see that revelation of the mystery um, of that which would be revealed so that the um, Gentiles would have inheritance well that was never known before it was never understood. So here Paul was brought forth this revelation that the gospel would also be preached to the Gentiles. Remember, the only preaching that was going on was to the Jews. Has everybody got it? And Paul was called forth to bring it to the Gentiles. How? By what? Revelation. It was an eternal impression that he understood what he had to do, which became revelation. So everybody got it? Hallelujah. Woohoo. What God was doing here, he was impressing into the created man's spirit. Are you listening? No, 
In other words, the Holy Spirit was impressing into the Spirit. Now, your spirit is always communion with the spirit realm. And you may not know it. That's why it's important to renew your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So that you can interpret what the spirit is saying. Has everybody got it? So your spirit communes with the spirit realm. Your soul interprets it. And then your body does the work. Has everybody got this? In other words, you don't even think about it, but there's already a, a created natural system in you that you don't have to think about blinking. Let me see, I need a blink. <clears throat> I might say I need a blink, <laughs> right? You don't even think about it. It's automatic because it's an automatic system and God created out of nature into the flesh, to the natural. Amen? It's, it's, it's associated. I mean, you can't find an organ in you that's going to cause you to blink. There's no organ in you that causes you to blink. Are you listening? You just, you know you got to do it. You can't walk around all day long with your eyes wide open. Your body can't take it. God created this body so that you blink. But you never walk around thinking, man, I got to blink twice. Blink, blink, blink. Can you imagine thinking that you have to blink while you're driving? Oh, God, you want any accidents there with me? Amen? Yes. So there's a, God has created an automatic system in this natural body that does things automatically. In other words, I don't have to sit here and think, I'm going to raise my hand. I just watch it move. Ooh. <laughs> Speak, grab something. You just do it automatically, don't you? Amen. And, 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 and of course, some of these things are associated with the brain. Has everybody got it? Um, someone who's brain dead. They're, uh, they don't move too well. But God has created it automatically in the system here. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Let's go to Exodus. <laughs> All right, count how many times you just blinked. <laughs> Exodus chapter 3. Hallelujah. In verse 1. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb. Uh, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire. But the bush was not consumed. I would call that an internal impression. Now, so the angel showed up as fire at the bush. Is everybody with me? And Mo, it caught Moses' eye. But when he saw that the bush was not really being consumed by fire, but it was on fire, he went over to observe it. In verse 3, Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned Aside to what? Look. God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. So when did God speak to Moses? When he what? 
when he turned to what? Look and investigate. Does everybody get it? See, so many times people are just expecting God just to, and there's sometimes God is requiring. He says, draw near to me, and I'll draw near to you. Amen. Now, this is, of course, we know that this is Old Testament. And in this, God would speak or impress individuals or impress things through nature. Amen. We're going to talk more about impressions later, uh, not tonight, but. So Moses, um, he didn't hear anything in, uh, until he decided to turn. Amen? Good. Exodus 40. So if your front lawn starts on fire, <laughs> make sure it's God before you, you know. Don't just look out in front and say, oh, the Lord's calling me. Why, your front lawn's on fire and cars are blowing up. Or your neighbor's house is on fire. Don't think that it might be a sign from God. Probably is. It's like, get out of there. <laughs> Exodus forty thirty four. Remember, the Lord wants to make himself so real to you. He's always been trying to make himself so real to you. He loves us unconditionally. We put our own conditions on ourselves. Then people listen to the voice of the stranger, which puts limitations. Then we come to the what was me syndrome. And it's all about me instead of all about him. You know why? Lack of revelation. Lack of revelation. In Exodus 40 and 34, then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting because the cloud rested above it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel will go onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not journey to the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day, and the fire was over it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout their journey. So while they are in the wilderness, God was impressing, the eternal was impressing into the natural realm, and he was using the cloud of glory and, the, and fire. So to let the people know that he was dwelling with him, with them. And when that cloud lifted and moved, everybody packed up and followed it. Is everybody with me? Why? Because God was wanting to reveal himself to his people. Of course, he frightened them. When he said, okay, everybody come to my mountain. And he said, hello. And everybody booked. They almost all passed out. They heard thunder and lightning and all kinds of stuff, and they didn't want to talk to God, so they just grabbed Moses and said, you talk to him. Is said, anybody going to kill you? Man, you can let him kill you first. So they were all frightened because they heard God's voice, because God does speak. Amen? See, the eternal impression was giving them direction again. So when it was time to get up and go, the cloud would move or the fire would move. Is everybody with me? Why? Because God was always trying to communicate with his people. Matthew 1. You know, many people don't realize that God's trying to communicate with his people through judgments and disasters that are happening. That's why the Bible says and there will be earthquakes and so forth and tsunamis and oil spills and Everything else. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, he was found, she was found with 
child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. Now you got to understand something. I mean, they were, they were courting. Okay, Joseph and Mary. She gets pregnant. He's like, whoa. I know it wasn't me. So he had a hard time. He's like, man, I, I, I can't marry this girl. I mean, we're supposed to get married. I can't marry her. I got to call the wedding off. She's pregnant, and I don't know who the dude is. I, I mean, I'll bring shame to my name and her family's name. I got to just secretly see ya. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Verse 20. But while he thought about these things, he was thinking about this. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a what? In a dream. Saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. It's okay, man. Cool. Take to you marry your wife. Go ahead, marry her. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. So, for some of you that are looking for marriage, God can visit you in a dream and tell you who. Hello? Sometimes you're better off waiting for the dream or some kind of impression, eternal impression, because so many people get married without confirmation and then they blow it. So we see her, and in verse 21 it says, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So another eternal impression that God can do is bring dreams, can he? Amen? Now, um, last night, I think it was last night, I had, yeah, last night I had a dream. Actually, it was this morning. It was very strange. And uh, I was in a living room. And I was sitting on a chair in a living room. And the TV and everything was, nothing was on yet. I was just sitting in a chair in the living room. I think I was getting ready to turn the TV on or something. I don't know. But I was sitting in a chair in the living room. I noticed this dirty rag. And when I picked up the dirty rag, I looked at it and went, oh, I didn't know if something was in it. I started waving it. And the whole living room turned into reptiles. They all turn into gators. It's like, whoa. So I jumped up on the chair. And I was still swinging the rag. And then somebody walked in, two, three people walked in. And the one person looked at me and was like, oh, that's mine. So I threw the rag to that person. And once I threw the rag to that person, the living room came back. I thought, whoa. Well, obviously it was something not, because it was a dirty rag. And that person is associated with it. So that's all I do is pray for the person. Is everybody with me? So God was showing me something. Amen? That, see, the dirty rag meant dirty garments. Blemished. Blemished garments. I thought, whoa. So I just prayed for the person. There was three people there, and, but the one person that caught it was the person I realized, you know. And, but when I first had the dream, I was like, oh, okay. And I knew I, I, I would have to come back about it. I thought, wow. But it was amazing because there was this perfect rug, and all of a sudden I lifted the rug up, and it turned into a... a, a flood of gators all over there was water in my living room i mean it just turned into a pool with gators all over and i just jumped on that chair man i was like yo and then now those three people walked in and a person in the middle was like oh that's mine i went Phew. and then Phew. everything turned back to a living room i'm thinking whoa and then i woke up but see the eternal impression with understanding brought revelation 
so that person can get prayed for. Does everybody understand that? Is everybody okay? Everybody's thinking, I wonder if it's me. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. But I'll pray anyways. <laughs> Acts chapter 2. I mean chapter 9. Acts 9. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. In verse 1, Then Saul, this is Apostle Paul, who was Saul, still breathing threats and murder, against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from them, from him to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. I would say that's an eternal impression. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice. He heard a what? A voice. God can speak to you. Saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Then the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. So even the men that were journeying with him heard the voice. They heard the eternal impression to Paul, who was then Saul. And Saul arose from the ground. When his eyes were open, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus, and he was there three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. It's called an instant fast. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a what? Vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas, uh, for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. And in a vision, of course, he can't see anything, so he's going to have a vision. Remember, his eyes were blinded. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. That's when Paul was baptized in the Holy Spirit. So everybody got it. Because the baptism in the Holy Spirit will bring you spiritual sight. Amen? Why? Because there's an eternal impression by the Holy Spirit. So we see here that um, you can also have eternal impressions by dreams. You can have eternal impressions by visions, by a voice. God can do anything He wants. He can come down in a cloud of glory. Amen? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Did those eternal impressions change somebody's life? Yes. You're looking at somebody whose life was changed by an eternal impression. I think it was an eternal bulldozer. <sighs> Ran me right over. Glory to God. Flattened me out and everything that was in me left. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Is everybody okay? Praise God in verse 6. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, not yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to what? Nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a what? Mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. For whose glory? Our glory which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. 
But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, to deep things of God, verse 14. But the natural man does not what? Receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So in the so many things that the natural man, the full, what he calls the things of God, foolish. Foolish. You know, when an individual becomes rebellious, it's because they become carnally minded and have not allowed the Spirit to impress the eternal things. Are you listening? So the, when an individual becomes rebellious to the things of God, they've actually shut off. See, you have the choice to shut off God's voice. You have the sh choice to shut off, I don't want to hear you. You have that choice. You can have that choice to be miserable. You can have that choice to be joyful. You have the choice. Everybody has that choice. Amen? You can either seek God or you can seek flesh. But I'm telling you that God wants to so much reveal himself to his people. So much. But, you know, the enemy comes in and tries to bring goofiness and religion and all kinds of other stuff. Now, we know that Paul, and I'm not going to go into all of this, Paul prayed in tongues, and he desired that everybody prayed in tongues. And he was explaining that he prayed in tongues and got revelation. Hello. So who, why wouldn't the devil want you to pray in the Spirit? So you wouldn't get revelation. Amen? Why? Because we go from revelation to revelation. Hallelujah. I want to go back to Daniel for a second. Daniel chapter 10. Ten, ten. Daniel chapter 10. Is everybody okay? Eternal impressions. God is getting ready to use even more. The Bible tells us in the latter days that there will be signs in the heavens and all kinds of things. You're going to begin to see eternal impressions through the heavenlies as you are seeing them right now and disasters more and more these are your eternal impressions and the but many people are not getting the revelation are, are you listening they're not getting the revelation that these things are possibility judgments of God warnings of God you know there are going to be cosmic impressions that God is going to be using here. We just had our, uh, what was it, uh, solar eclipse? Was it the solar eclipse or lunar e Solar? Yeah. I mean, there's so many things that are happening. Everybody went to this island called, uh, oh man, I forgot the name of it. Anyways. What was it? Yeah, Easter. Easter Island. Easter Island was the main place in the world where everybody could see this eclipse on an island called Easter. Hello. You know, I think about these things. I mean, photographers and reporters and journalists from all over the world went to Easter Island. I'm sure they all squeezed down there and watched this eclipse because it was a phenomenal eclipse. This doesn't happen. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? In Daniel chapter 10 and verse 10, it says, Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and in the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that, I've, that I speak to you and stand upright. For I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, Do not be afraid, Daniel. For the first day that you what? Set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God. Your words were heard. Two things. Setting your heart to understand. 
That's why one of my prayers every single day, and I'm just sharing with you mine, Lord, grant me wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment, counsel, correction, and direction. In other words, I am willing to be chastened. I am willing to be corrected. Why? So I have understanding. Does everybody get it? In other words, from the moment you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were what? Heard. And I have come because of your words. And this is one of the areas where revelations come. Eternal impressions come. When an individual is willing to seek out God with understanding and humble themselves. Because they're saying, Lord, please show me your way. Lord, please grant me understanding. Please counsel, correction, and direction. I want it today. Amen? Lord, chasing me if you need to. Whatever you need to do, show me. Let me examine myself. But I can't examine myself because there's areas I won't look at. But would you please look at them for me and show me? Expose those things in me. Remove those things in me that are offensive to you and cause me to stumble. Has everybody got it? See, there's just got to be a couple of serious words there to God. But it's got to be from the heart. From the moment you set your heart to understand and you humbled yourself, your words were heard. And revelation came. Why? Because there's an eternal impression came. And because you understood it, revelation came. There's a spirit of revelation. He's, a revela he's an angel of the Lord. And he brings revelation to you. Is everybody okay? The Holy Spirit brings revelation to us. Praise God. Isaiah 52. How about the gifts of the Spirit? Amen? Now we just talked about praying in tongues, bring revelation, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. All of these things are the, the gifts of the Spirit. They're not our gifts, they're the gifts of the Spirit. But the enemy tries to tell people that they're done away with so that people do not get eternal impressions and revelations. Because we go from revelation to revelation. Glory to glory. Hallelujah. Isaiah 52. And verse 4. For thus says the Lord, My people went down at first into Egypt to dwell there. Then the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now the word Egypt here means the secular world. Now therefore, what have I? Uh, th now therefore, what have I here? Says the Lord, that my people are taken away for nothing. Those who rule over them make them wail. Says the Lord, and my name is blasphemed continually and every day. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am He who what speaks. Behold, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation and who says to Zion, your God reigns. Your watchmen shall lift up their voices. With their voices they shall sing together. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion. Break forth into joy, sing together. You waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has com comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem, and the Lord has made bare his holy arm. In the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. God is still speaking. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Eternal impressions. First John chapter 5, and verse 6. Praise be to God. 
1 John chapter 5, verse 6. Is everybody there? This is he who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is truth. The greatest revelation, the greatest eternal impression was Jesus coming into the natural realm. And what was he doing? He was bringing revelation to everybody who was willing to listen. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. You notice that Jesus' name was not there because he wasn't yet. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he has testified of his Son. He who believes in the Son of God has a witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. And this is the testimony that God has given us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life, and he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Now, go to Mark 16. Mark 16. So the three witnesses in heaven are the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. The three witnesses on earth are the what? The water, the blood, and the spirit. Amen? In Mark 16, praise God. 16, I think it is. Mark 16, and verse 16. Would you read it with me? And he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly or by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover there's something important here I want to share with you. And it says that in my name, in other words, the eternal impression, okay, the eternal impression which brings revelation to me and you. Jesus was the greatest eternal impression. Amen. And when he left, he left his spirit for me and you. So the spirit of Christ is now utilizing us so that we can eternal impress into the kingdom of darkness. Is everybody with me? Do you get this? In other words, his name speaks. His name does what? It speaks. And what does it speak to? It speaks to the powers of darkness. See, it's not just the name. The name speaks. The name of Jesus, Yeshua, is alive. When you say Jesus in the name of Jesus, his name speaks to the powers of darkness and say, every knee shall bow. Speak. So um, please understand that God is always wanting to speak to us, isn't he? There's the internal impression from God, from the eternal realm into this realm, into the natural realm. And when you are baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, Hello? You are able to utilize those things in the areas of gifts and so forth. But in the name of Jesus, because the greatest impression of the eternal realm was Jesus coming into the natural realm and bringing revelation. And by so doing that, he left his spirit for me and you. He left the seed and he left the spirit. And by his spirit... In me and you, 
the eternal impressions, are you listening, are now penetrating the powers of darkness. But see, the enemy doesn't want us to grab hold of this and understand this because people think it carnally. You must begin to look at the name of Jesus speaks. If it didn't speak, it would have no effect. Is everybody okay? So the name of Jesus, his name now impresses or what we call penetrates the pollution of the unseen realm. And it's been given to his warriors because his name speaks. And in my name they will cast out devils. Why? Because now we're impressing, we're penetrating the powers of darkness. Because it's been granted. Because his name speaks. And still speaking. And still speaking. But see, sometimes without that revelation, people just say the name and don't think nothing. His name speaks. Is everybody with me? Hebrews 4. Glory. Hebrews chapter 4. In verse 11. Hebrews 4 and verse 11. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is what? Living. It's what? Living. His word speaks. Does everybody got it? The word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing into the division of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him whom we must give account. His word speaks. It's still impressing. Is everybody with me? Hebrews 12. The three major weapons God has given us is his name, his word, and his blood. Still penetrating the powers of darkness, but many times misused because it's misunderstood or not used. Hebrews 12 and verse 22. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. Glory. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. Hallelujah. To God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of the sprinkling that what? That what? speaks better than that of Abel. So the blood speaks. Does everybody see that? Verse 25. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape the, who refused him who spoke on earth, how much shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven? Whose voice then shook the earth but now he is promising, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably but with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Second Corinthians 13. And then one more scripture. Second Corinthians 13. 
His name speaks. His word speaks. His blood speaks. That's why he said, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom that's binding and loosening. So when we speak these things, it's happening in his name. But see, if it's not backed by belief or faith, it's not happening. Because if there's not faith activating in it, it's not happening. Has everybody got it? So, so many people do things but don't believe it. And it doesn't happen because it's not faith. You must believe, amen, when you speak or it doesn't happen. 2 Corinthians 13, is everybody there? Now, of course, some things are God's time, isn't it? Amen. But you hold on. If you hold on to it, it's going to come to pass. If you let go of it, it's gone. Second Corinthians 13 and verse 11. No. Verse 1. Paul writes, This will be the third time I am coming to you. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. I have told you before and foretell, foretell as if I were present the second time and now being absent, I write to those who have sinned before and to all the rest that if I come again, I will not spare since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me who is not weak toward you but mighty in you. In other words, Christ speaking in him. Why? Because he was filled baptized with the Holy Ghost. He was still, the Holy Spirit was still speaking. The anointing was teaching. Somebody got it. For though he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him. But we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Come on, read it with me. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. But I trust that you will all know that we are not disqualified. So when he's trying to share with them, he's trying to let them know, listen, listen. The one who was impressed into the natural realm, his spirit is now in you. The anointing, the Christ, the spirit of Christ in us is now wanting to penetrate the kingdom of darkness through you. Because his name speaks, his word speaks, and his blood speaks. Has everybody got it? And I want to close at Romans 16. And he's speaking through us. Romans 16. Eternal impressions. Man, cosmic impressions is about to happen. Now let me tell you. Eternal impressions. <laughs> Romans 16. In verse 25, everybody okay? Are you getting it? We'll see. Now to him who is what? Able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began. Yes. What's that mystery? Christ in you but now made manifest by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith to God alone wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever and everybody said amen eternal impressions bring revelations. So everybody got it? Revelations are eternal impressions that are understood. 
Remember, though, God is eternally impressing in every area. Even now, even in this room, towards you, even right now He is. Even right now. Conviction is an eternal impression. The thing is, is there needs to be revelation that it's conviction so that repentance can be granted. Guilt is not an eternal impression. It's an oppression from the devil. Everybody got it. See, but many people can't discern neither one. They don't know whether it's guilt or condemnation or conviction. Because there's that place that we must be in the Spirit to understand and discern. To understand and discern. The Bible says that the Spirit of truth will guide us to all truth. All truth. It says that the anointing will teach us. The anointing. The Spirit of Christ in us who wants to speak through you and penetrate the powers of darkness. And rescue his children. There will be persecution. There will be many things arising. Even heavier. We haven't seen anything yet. But it's going to increase. Because the enemy can no longer hide. He's coming right out from the surface. Right to the surface. He can no longer hide. Bit by bit you'll see more and more demonic activity being approved and more and more righteousness being disapproved but you must hold fast you must be strong and stand amen Paul went through it and what kept him was the Holy Spirit because he the eternal impressions brought revelations amen he was religious once. In fact, he was all trying to kill everybody that was spirit-filled. He thought it was mandated by God. Until the Lord slammed him off of his horse and spoke to him and he realized, oh my God, I didn't have that understanding. Paul got revelation and repented and separated himself with the Lord for almost 14 years. And he came back in the power of the Spirit and began to teach all the revelations he got because of the internal impressions he got that became revelations because he understood them. And that's what we have. The writings of internal impressions that were understood to bring revelation. But Paul warned, he said, not many people will understand my writings because they are a revelation. But without the Spirit, you won't understand this. It'll become just a letter or a book. Eternal impressions. God is still speaking. He wants to speak to every one of us. Don't turn your ear off to Him. Don't turn your heart off to Him. Don't turn your back to him. Let your face seek his face. Come to him with and the desire to have understanding and humbleness. Be submissive in all things. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow him. Stay filled with the spirit. Continue to worship him with all of your heart that an internal impression would come even if it's conviction. Time is short. The body of Christ is uniting. Uniting. Walls of denominations are going to begin to fall. God will pour out His Spirit in spite of people. in spite of their denominations and religiosities and so forth. He's pouring out his people. He's pouring out his spirit on his people. But you know, he's pouring them out on the ones that are seeking. So many people have stopped seeking. They've stopped. Okay. Now what? Keep seeking, man. 
It's the enemy that tells you to stop seeking. Jesus gave the example. He never stopped seeking. He was always in prayer. He was always seeking. We can never stop seeking. Even somebody who's a satanic worshiper, if that person keeps seeking, that person will find Jesus. If he's seeking the truth, he'll find my dad. <laughs> Seek and you will find. Knock, the door will be open. Ask and you'll get it. But you must hold on. Amen. Stand strong. Be ready in season and out. Time is short. Oh, we got to be ready. Would you raise your hands to heaven? Father, I thank you for your word tonight. You are awesome and you are mighty. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us. And I pray, Father, that, yes, that the internal impression will be so real to your people that you'll speak to them loudly, Dad, loudly. I know it's a still small voice, but Lord, we want a loud voice from you. Visit, Papa, your people in dreams and visions and rescue those who are touching unclean things. I thank you, Father. And I bless your people, each and every one in this room tonight. I bless them in the name of Jesus. I bless them. And I ask that you prosper them, mature them, and raise them up. They'll be in your image and likeness. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Give my mighty hand. Yeah, glory.